What is going on guys? I am at the Prime Desert Woodland Reserve in Lancaster, California. And it is a hot but beautiful day. And I am here to talk about two pairs of entry-level binoculars that I really enjoy, the things I do and do not like about them, and why I would use each one for a specific use case. So obviously here I've got the Vortex Diamondback HDs, and I have the Loophold BX2 Alpines. I bought both of these used because I'm too cheap to buy a brand new pair, and I think I spent about 150 on each, roughly. They are very similar. I mean, if you just look at them, they're built very similarly. And I've seen comparisons online where they talk about each one, but I haven't seen a good comparison video. Uh, let's see, Backfire YouTube channel talks about the best binoculars under $250, and they actually claim that Leupold BX1, or sorry, BX2 Alpines were the winner. But in that comparison video, they compared these guys to the Crossfires, which to me makes no sense. The Crossfires are much cheaper. This is a much better comparison. Also, if you watch YouTube videos, they already have videos out there that compare the Diamondbacks to the Crossfires, and they talk about how the Diamondback is the clear winner. A uh, really good example, check out Optica Exotica, if you haven't already. He's got an amazing YouTube channel all about binoculars. Anyway, simply because I couldn't find that comparison, I decided to make one myself. And let me start with a few things that I really appreciate about each of these binoculars. Uh, let's start with the Vortex Diamondbacks. Okay, first of all, they have a ridiculously smooth focus ring. This thing is butter. At least for this price point. I'm sure there are better focus rings out there. But this thing is so comfortable. And I had these for about two weeks before I got the Alpines. And I have to say, that was one of the biggest letdowns on the Alpine side. I feel like if I'm pressing from this side, it is a lighter press than if I press from the opposite end. Also, there feels like... I don't know, it just doesn't feel as smooth. Going one way versus the other, sometimes it feels like it gets a little... I don't know, stiff, and I felt like I had an easier time getting on focus quickly with the diamond back focus ring. Flare resistance definitely goes to the loop holds. There were plenty of situations where I was holding up both binoculars in the exact same situation, focusing on the same objects, and I had flare peeking in uh, on the diamond backs. Did not really appreciate that, but it was gone with the loopholes, which was really nice. And these are actually the non-HD version. These have an older uh, coating on the optics. Um, I'm sure, you know, HD means something different to each brand, but this is the most recent version of the Diamondbacks, and this is one step back now that they have the HD loopholes. Um, and even though there was more flare resistance here, there was actually less chromatic aberration on these guys. There was occasionally some slight fringing. I saw it there. In high contrast situations, though, I could be looking at the exact same situation. There would be almost no chromatic aberration here in areas where I would find very strong purple chromatic aberration here. Uh, and then as far as sharpness goes... Okay, so... Personally, this might have just been me. It might have been the focus ring helping me get on point quicker. I felt like I had an easier time getting center sharpness with these bad boys. And I feel like this, and I've heard a lot of people say that it has less fall off. It's uh, sharper across the frame. I understand that. But even if it's sharper across the frame, I felt like the center sharpness was just a smidge better on the Diamondbacks. Which actually, for me, coming from photography, had more background separation, so that meant more 3D pop. Not that this doesn't have it, but I feel like this was a winner there. Flare resistance here, probably contrast, although I feel like this had uh, more natural colors. I feel like this was a little warmer, this might have been a little cooler, but overall I just feel like this was more natural in the colors that, that appear. That's okay. Um, okay, for a while, I actually thought that the Diamondbacks were better in low light, but I realized, I think they only, 
I only perceived them to be slightly lighter in brighter daylight because of the lack of flare resistance. The more I compared the two, the more I went, oh, okay, that's not as much about being brighter as it is about not having as good a flare resistance, which made me perceive them to be brighter. But when I compared them in low light, I went out in multiple low light situations with both pairs of binoculars, and I discovered that, yeah, I could see a difference with the twilight optics. I don't know what they do over at Loophold, but you know what? It works because I don't know if I can guarantee the 20 to 30 minutes of extra light, you know, that they do or viewing time, I mean, but there were definitely times in darker situations where I went, okay, I can definitely see better with the Loopholds. If that's what you need them for, go for it. They both have really nice eye cups, you know, two steps up, two steps down, two steps up, two steps down might be a little bit easier to click on the loopholes. They both stay where they're supposed to be just fine. Um, let's see what else. They both came with a carrying case. The carrying case on the Diamondbacks actually came with the little harness for your back, but the strap itself that came with these guys was kind of doo-doo. I wasn't a big fan. I actually really liked the strap that came with the loopholes, and I left the clips on here. But yeah, I felt like this was a win when it came to the strap. It was very comfortable, easy to adjust, looked better. This had a foamy garbage strap, but both of them have a nice glass pack. The cases that came with both of these were fine. Um, a little bit more compact on the loophole end, but whatever. Uh, let's see, what else can I say? Um, I don't think there is a clear winner between these two. I really wish there was. Uh, there were times that I preferred the Diamondbacks, and there were times that I preferred the loopholes. If I was going for more flare resistance, if I'm going for better uh, low light capabilities, then yeah, I'm going with the loopholes. For sheer enjoyment, I feel like the Diamondbacks were a little better. Uh, even with the less flare resistance, it wasn't that noticeable in a lot of situations. And I like the smoother focus ring, and I like the 3D pop, and I like that they're a little bit lighter. Um, I'm not sure what the exact weight on either one of these is, but I know that the Vortex are lighter, and you notice that when you're carrying them around for long periods of time. And you know what's funny? I'll point this out, because the main thing that I prefer about these guys right here is the focus ring. That makes such a difference for me. After getting used to this, I play with this little guy, and I'm kind of like, ugh, I feel the play, I feel the difference depending on where my finger is. But I actually went to a local sporting goods shop that had the step up from each of these. It had the BX4s and it had the Vortex Viper HDs. And both of those ran $4.99 in-store. And I gotta say, it was the opposite on those two. The Viper HD actually had a worse focus ring than my Diamondbacks do. The BX4 Pro Guides had a better focus ring, you know? It was backwards, and I don't know if that's just a case-by-case -case thing or what the deal is, but I really think if I were to upgrade, if I were to sell both of these and upgrade to one pair of, you know, mid-range, above entry level, more expensive, but not like $1,000 binoculars, you know, I'd probably go with the BX4 Pro Guides. And once again, it makes more sense to go into the store and compare them yourself, because honestly, me, I went and did that, and I thought, you know, I think the Viper HDs actually feel better in my hand, but I prefer the focus ring once again, and that is a huge thing for me. So, let's see. I don't know if there's anything I missed that I really appreciate. Like I said, uh, I went over the optics, I went over the focus rings, I went over low light capability, contrast, uh, warmer and colder. If there's anything that I missed that you specifically want to know about these binoculars, uh, just shoot me a message or leave a comment. But yeah, uh, thanks for watching and I hope you appreciate this because I couldn't find this comparison anywhere online and I think it was worth doing because if you're getting a good pair of entry-level binoculars, it's not about which pair is the best. In this case, I'd say it's all about use case. And like I said, you can look at Backfire's YouTube channel and look at the best binoculars under $250 to kind of get the idea of why I brought these up and then why I brought these in. And you can look at Optica Exotica's YouTube channel because this is my only YouTube review and he has tons and tons of information. And I'd like to see him do this comparison himself or do the Vipers versus the BX4 Pro Guides. 
but for some reason his channel hasn't brought anything loopholed in. Uh, and I don't know why that is. Maybe he has a bias, or maybe it's just not on his radar. But I think these are a better looking pair of binoculars. Now that's an opinion. They're both good looking. I prefer these. I've rambled enough. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and like it. I don't expect you to subscribe because I don't make videos all the time. But, uh, you know, get this out there so other people that enjoy binoculars and want to get an entry level can see this and decide for themselves. I mean, if this is what they're looking at anyway. All right, thanks a lot.